Welcome to Mickey J White Hat. Thank you for that reception on my last video, how to look at a vilest malware. One of my viewers who watched that video came up with a bit of a problem. They've got a website they're fairly certain is hacking them and they need to prove it. And so they wanted me to help them pull it apart and have a look. So today we're tearing down a bit of a website. So stay tuned. So we go to the website and on this website it doesn't take too long and down in the bottom right hand corner we've got malicious web page. We've got a pop up from our antivirus warning us something on this website is malicious. Don't have to wait too long and bang up pops a list of all of the files that came down. The same one in this case over and over again saying that I have a Trojan script generic virus. Hmm what's this website doing? Digging a bit deeper into it, I can see that these files have been saved to my C drive. Obviously, the antivirus is kicking in and deleting them. I don't wait too long and bang! Website is now blocked. Something on this website is not very happy. What do we do? Back at the main website, I am going to right click, whether you be in Chrome, Internet Explorer, whatever it might be, and I'm going to view source or save the page or whatever it is I'm going to do to get this page to my hard disk. And then let's pull it apart and have a look. So this is the default HTML page that came down when I right clicked and saved. And I've opened it with Notepad++. If you have a bit of a look through this, it doesn't take too long to spot. This is the file that the antivirus is complaining about. So I've cut and pasted the full path to that file. And now I'm going to download that JavaScript file and have a look at just that file. How am I going to do that without getting infected? Ah, I'm going to use some Visual Basic scripting, so let me show you the code for that. This is my quick and dirty VBS file for getting down a file without me getting infected. So basically I put at the very top here the URL and the file name I want to pull down, and the file name I want to save it as. The rest of it is just simply a HTTP GET, download the file, save it to my hard disk, set the variable back to nothing, and done. That's all there is to it. So I will uh, make this file available if people want access to it. Just going to have to let me know in the comments. Um, other than that, let's download this JavaScript file and have a look. So here's the JavaScript file. As you can see, that's not going to be easy to read. How am I going to find anything in this mess? Now, there's two things I can do here. First thing, I can run it through a beautifier and make it look pretty. And the second thing I can do is I happen to have here where this file came from, I can download the original one and compare the two using a difference tool. So let's use a difference tool first, and then let's pretty it after that. From the website, I've gone to code.jQuery.com, or I've gone to jQuery on GitHub, and I can download the original versions of that JavaScript file from either of those two locations. So what I've done is gone to diffchecker.com. I've loaded up the original version on one side. I've loaded up the other version on this website on the other side. What we're now going to do is we're going to compare those two. So let's find the difference. Here's the difference. See this piece of code here? That's different. So in this entire JavaScript file, which as you saw was quite large, that's the only text that's different. Quite clearly, somebody has taken this function and inserted a new part of the function in. So we're going to have to find out what exactly that function does. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to beautify this script so I can see what it looks like. To do that, I've gone to beautifier.io and I've pasted the script down the bottom here. So as you can see, it's got no word wrapping. It's just all chucked in there. Beautify code, and bang. Now look at that. Isn't that much easier to read? You can actually see what's going on. And this bit at the beginning here, this is all to do with that additional code that's been added. So we can now take that out and have a look at it. Before we get ahead of ourselves, though, how about we get that JavaScript file and run it through VirusTotal. So here's the result in VirusTotal. We know that four hits have actually claimed this is definitely a virus. 
They've all called it something to a script generic or something along those lines. So how about we go from here and put it up into hybrid analysis. So over in hybrid analysis, let's have a look and see what we've found out. This episode brought to you by the virus doctor. Yes, I pull them apart, but he helps you get rid of them. So here in hybrid analysis, we've got our results. Now, let me give you a quick run rundown of what it's found. The JavaScript is going to use WMI to access the system. It impersonates the logged on user. It loads resources from kernel32.dll. It runs a script through the Windows scripting host, which is the JavaScript. It sets up a debugger and tracks what people are doing. It tries to contact the URL and then from there record information. So this sounds exactly like a form jacker. Now the way a form jacker works, if you can think of somebody robbing a house, they're doing it in pairs. One person stays out on the street, he's looking for the police. He's going to alert the second person if the police come along. The first person, meanwhile, ransacks the house. So what we have here is a debugger that is watching the house. It's watching for police. Now while the debugger is doing that, the other piece of code is possibly on this page trying to get Visa card numbers or whatever it's trying to get. It could be anything from email addresses, but it's trying to get something from this website. Now that information that I've just told you, I got from going through this page. So you can actually now go through here and you can see here it's using WMI. You can see here that it tries to hide a process that's impersonating the logged on user. And as you scroll down, you can see it's trying to avoid anti -engineer, uh, reverse engineering. Uh, you can see it's using WScript. So all the things I've just told you are listed in here, including the fact that when it tried to run in the sandbox, it failed to run. But we got enough information from that to know basically what it's doing. I'll include these links in the description for you to look at later. Taking a copy of the code that is extra in that modified JavaScript, it looks like the following. Taking the word eval out, because eval will run this code, um, change that to console.log, as I've done here, we'll now see the output of it without it running. So we're about to see what all this obfuscated text looks like. And here we have it down the bottom here. So as you can see, it is going to write to the document an iframe. The iframe is of zero size, so you're not going to see it, and it redirects you to a website, which is che0.com, and to a page cs5.html. So that obfuscated text, that's what it came to, just that little tiny bit there. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to virus total. I'm going to use the URL scanner and I'm going to type in the URL I wish to go to. As you can see, I've got zero indicators that it is a virus. However, it has been marked as suspicious. So straight away, I'm not going to take this on face value. Straight away, there's something going on here. If I actually take that CS5 HTML file and scan that, it comes up as an iframe inject add, add aware. So obviously what's happening is it's creating a frame in the name. It says iframe and it injects ads into it. So that's what the actual malicious activity is by the look of it. If you want to find out more, you can Google it. There's lots of people talking about it and how it works. So using my little magic VBS downloader, I am now going to plug in the details for that particular HTML file and I'm going to download it to my hard drive and have a look. Here is the content of the CS5 HTML file. So it pretends to be an error for a four page not found. And some of this is actually in Chinese and because it can't be printed here in Notepad, it's come up as strange characters. But basically it's a white page saying error 404. If you have a close look though, after the divs, there's a whole heap of line breaks. And right at the end is a solid bit of script. So off the page where you can't see it, is now this extra little script that's going to run. If you have a look in that script, you can clearly see that there are a whole bunch of other JavaScript files, which you're going to pull down and run. There's also some flash in there. So what we have is an iframe that's pretending to be a 404, but it's going to pull down all this other scripts. And because it's a zero size as well, you're not going to see it. 
cutting out all that junk and just keeping the last little bit, the last script, we can see this is the component that runs all the JavaScript and all the Flash. So this is the stuff we need to look into further. Taking that text and removing all the junk, I came up with these links. Now I've just replaced TT with XX so people can't click on these links. I did note that this particular JavaScript here actually downloads additional JavaScript. So I've downloaded those files as well and also go and have a look at those. I've actually scanned all of those now with VirusTotal. The only two that actually came up with a hit were the two flash animations. Again, I downloaded all of those items using my little VBS downloader. So here is the detection for the first of the two flash files and it behaves like flash XX, XSS I should say, and we'll look that up in a moment. If I look at the second flash, exactly the same, behaves like flash XSS. Unfortunately, not much information on the details. There's not much to go on. So we know these flash files are possibly carrying malware of some description. And we know that the Java file has set up some kind of a debugger. Given the size of this particular JavaScript, I decided to beautify it. And in beautifying it, I noticed that it's fairly ossificated. There's something else going on in this script. It's actually quite a large script and it actually calls for those extra websites. So I've gone off those extra websites and downloaded those codes as well. So this uh, particular JavaScript is coming from that second website and that actually refers to a third website. So I'm ending up looping through all these websites in this iframe. Again, it's very much obfuscated. So I'm going to go up and yet again, get all of the links out of here and I'm going to download all those links and scan them all and check what's going on. Um, I can see something very suspicious here. Maybe block plus and all sorts of weird names here. Interesting. Snippet catcher makes you wonder what's going on here. Looking up the links, I've discovered that the majority of them are all in Chinese. Not exactly what I expected to see. So they're all going off the Chinese links in the back end behind this iframe. So the last part of this puzzle really, other than these links and where they're going to and the additional JavaScript they're pulling down that's obfuscated, and I'm not going to be able to get through it today to figure out what it is, are the flash files. So looking at this flash file, let's find a little bit more about what this behaves like xss.zb means. This exploit is a cross-site scripting vulnerability which embeds flash files in a vulnerable website using the navigate to URL or the get URL. Sounds interesting. Here is a bit more information and I'll put these links again in the description, but this talks a little bit about how that works. So we're expecting these flash files to go off to other websites and pull things down as well. We now need to get into these flash files and have a bit of a look at them. So what do we have here is a decompiler. We also have access to the Adobe SWF investigator. And between these two tools, we can open up the SWF files and have a look inside and see what makes them up. So we're going to use this free flash decompiler to open up those two flash files and have a look inside. So first we'll open the 30 day SWF. And here we have the contents of that flash file. As you can see, it's got everything from the file attributes to any symbols it uses, to any video frames it may have, and also has all the scripts. Here we go, all the scripts, and also has all the constants and traits and things like that. So we've got a fairly good idea what is inside this particular file. We can also export the XML header of it all, or we can export everything from it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to export everything from this flash. And then I'm going to open up the second SWF file and do the same for that. And then we can have a bit of a step through it. And what we're really after is these action scripts down below.
I've just opened up the second of the two SWF files and one of the things I did note is a big warning that came up that said the unusual symbols in the names down here of the scripts indicate the scripts are actually in some way ossificated and what I'm seeing here may not be the true code that I need to find. Stepping out into the actual exports, this is the tree of information that came out. So any of the movies will be in here, any of the images will be in here. The first thing I noted is this frame, 1.png is the file, is ultra small. It's just a dot on the screen. So not only are we in an iframe that is zero in size, so very small, uh, if nothing at all, we actually have a SWF appearing in it, which is the size of a dot. So they've gone out of their way to make this very difficult to spot. In the binary file, I can open that up and look at that with Notepad. And the first thing I spot is that this was actually compiled with d0 or sorry doswf.com. I happen to know that anything compiled with that has probably been made hard to read. If we go across to their website, you'll notice they promise encryption and ossification. So what's happened is someone's created this SWF and then they've probably encrypted it and ossificated it. So I can't pull it apart much further. However, I'm going to pull it apart a little further, have a bit more of a look. So fonts, there are none. Frames we've been into, images, there are none. Morph shapes, there are none. And as we go down, we've got scripts. And here we have the two scripts. If we open the first one. So this is the script animation or whatever is going to occur, the action script. And we can now go through this and see if there's any URL calls. As per the warning in the product, um, it is actually ossificated. So at some point, this is going to be very difficult to figure out what's going on. I would say at this point here, where it's doing this split and changing something to lowercase, I would expect somewhere here, it's actually trying to go out to a URL and it's just hiding it from me. And it probably has something to do with that binary as well. So this is all the functions in this SWF file. And of course, if I have a look at that second SWF file as well, it's very, very similar. So I've exported that out and I've got the scripts here and it's got that little unusual symbol at the beginning and it's a similar looking file. So I can see, whoop, I can see at the beginning here, the DOSF, sorry, DOSWF packages loading. So in other words, this is where it's obviously got some sort of encryption and this symbol obviously represents that it's been encrypted. So I'm not actually going to get out of this what I wanted to see. I do know from the virus total that this file does go off and contacts URLs. Obviously there's some, some sort of property it's picked up on that tells it it does that. Um, but actually looking at this code, this is obviously the code that does the presentation as such and not the scripts behind the scenes which are stored in that binary file. So at this point, there's not much point going any further. So what we do have is a website that yes, it is definitely hacking people that come to it. It's loading some kind of a debugger. It's watching what people are doing. It's firing off a very small iframe of zero size with an image in it for the SWF. That's a small little pinprick. And that's then going off to other URLs and going off to China. So it's highly likely from what I am seeing, this is a form jacker and it's highly likely this is grabbing information and it looks like it's possibly passing that up to China somewhere. So that is the pull down of that website as far as I can take it. Others might be able to take it further, but that's as far as I'm taking it for tonight. So thank you very much to that viewer who asked me to do that for them. Um, it's been an eye opener for me too, and also for you, I'm sure. I would encourage anybody who has got any comments, drop them in the uh, comments below. If you like this video or it helped you in some way, give me a thumbs up. And of course, I'd love you to subscribe. Join me in my wild ride for my next piece of malware. Have a great day.